Glory to you, Lord Christ. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad so it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Praise to you Lord Christ. For your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. May all my words be in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sometimes preaching each week can be a challenge, but the preacher in a faith tradition like ours uses the common lectionary, and we always get to pick from three readings and a psalm each Sunday. If one reading's too challenging, you get some more options. And I am a gospel preacher. I just really love Jesus, and I love the struggle with his teachings. Although I always try to weave in material from the other lessons, you'll always hear words from me on the gospel. And it sure would be easy to stick to the gospel today, but we just need to talk about that first reading from Genesis. How can we skip over that history in our sacred text? It opens with Laban telling Jacob he needs to be paid. What's the deal with Jacob? And why is he so important to our Genesis, our beginning story? Well, let's have a little lesson on family tree time. Okay, so you all probably heard of Adam. So here we've got Adam. Adam has Cain and Abel. Well, Abel doesn't fare too well, so it's just Cain. And then there's Seth comes along later. Through Seth, and then a whole bunch of lot of begets comes down to Noah. Noah has three sons. Well, Shem, a whole bunch of more begets, comes down to Abraham and sends Sarah. Well, those two have Esau and Jacob. Now, Jacob wasn't too nice. He uh, he tricked Esau, the older son, out of his inheritance. Esau was really hairy, and so Jacob put on a bunch of animal skins, and as poor old Abraham was blind, he said, oh, Dad, bless me, give me my inheritance, and he gets, he gets the inheritance. So Jacob was a little trickster. In today's story, you would think, well, you know, Jacob got tricked, so, you know, he kind of deserved it. Well, he ends up, as we heard today, ends up marrying Leah, later on Rachel, and then also has children by Zilpha and Bilam. Now, all that, why Jacob's so important? All that, those women create the 12 tribes. And from there, 
comes to us today. Oh, and then I'm going to put on this. This is what we should really be talking about. And we've heard about Adam a lot, but hello, she went through birth the first time. She should be the one that we talk about. So coming from me, that's why we get to Jacob. So Jacob is clearly in the history of God's chosen people, but he is complicated. Tricking his brother out of his birthright, having children with two wives and each of their servants. Our text today shows powerful men giving women away. There's no indication that the women have any control over their destiny. Since the pandemic started, Reverend Jeannie has said many times on how each week's readings have been a reflection, almost real time, of what is happening right now in our world. I agree. The word has never seemed more alive than in our present times. The Diocese of Arizona, along with many other denominations today, is on the path to racial reconciliation through confession, repentance, reconciliation, restoration, and commitment. All these steps are crucial to healing. It begins, though, with the confession of our history. And I do wish often history would just stay in the past. But the powerful in today's scripture treat women the same way some women are treated today. This is a bad history lesson, made even uglier by realizing it can still happen and does. We could, if I was the preacher then, I guess I would jump to St. Paul's letter to the Romans. But there we find people persecuted by hardship, distress, and peril. We are being killed all day long, Ivan read. Well, that sounds like a pandemic. Right again, wise Reverend Jeannie. This last Friday, or just yesterday, or two days ago, St. Peter's Episcopal Church held its first online burial service for a victim of the COVID pandemic, our brother, Bob Willoughby. I celebrated the Eucharist alone in the church. Sandra was up in Cheyenne, surrounded by family. Ivan and Deb, Eleanor and Gladdy, all joined from their homes. Our fellow mourners were just little tiny pictures or words on my telephone screen. But something amazing, as it always does, happened at St. Peter's. We gathered as a complete body of Christ, just as richly and completely as if we were all here in person. That Reverend Jeannie, boy, can she express how we feel. Her sermon honestly revealed the incredible loss we all experience in our socially distant lives. Being away from Bob during the last weeks was very tough on all who loved him, especially Sandra and his priests. I tried to head straight back home after giving him last rites while standing outside a dusty window at his hospice care home. But I had to pull over for a while and just not on the side of the road. I felt so helpless, so not enough. Life is tough right now. Where do we turn? We turn to the gospel because it is good news. The gospel is good news because Jesus reveals fundamental truths in the mustard seed. And mustard seeds are teeny tiny, and they're so small that you really can't just space them out one at a time. I planted mustard seed outside my door in Sacramento during the time I was in seminary. In order to pay for school, we sold the family house and we were living in a duplex. There was just a small little bit of sunny space and I thought I'd ask Jesus on the mustard seed story. Of course, Jesus was right. 
the deep river soil nourished from that little tiny seed, a mustard plant that really did reach tree size, about 10 feet. And we actually did witness hummingbirds sitting on its branches. It was amazing to see something so mighty start with such a tiny beginning. What a perfect right on time lesson Jesus gives us today. For our Savior teaches us in the most powerful way, the only way we can confess and ultimately overcome our ugly histories and today's challenges. Christians, have no fear. Have no fear, for we can look at the way women have been treated in the past and today. We can confess how the powerful can sometimes harm the weak. Without fear, we can look at the world-changing effects of the COVID pandemic. We can confess how we are just not in control. Fear not, for the love that Jesus pours out into our world lives in you. Like a tiny mustard seed, love begins small, but ends up changing everything. Christians, the miracles start when love becomes universal. Instead of respecting just the women we know, Christians work to love all women in the world. Kindness becomes normal. Through love, women like Leah, Bilam, Rachel, and Zilpah are in control of their own destinies. Abuse of power has no chance when we recognize all women as our mothers, our sisters, our daughters. Instead of despair and isolation, Christians work to gather and worship, gather in community to witness the markers in each of our lives. Although Reverend Jeannie's words at that funeral service brought tears, she brought us closer when she described the love Bob showed to her, just like God the Father shows to Jesus. Death cannot diminish that love one bit. Even in our sadness, Joy could not be stopped. Friday was Bob's birthday. At the end of the service, Deb pointed out it's his first heavenly birthday. And we heard Gladys' love for Bob and his family and her gift of music. And then we sang happy birthday to Bob from St. Peter's, Cheyenne, and her homes. This thing has no chance when we recognize the joy that continues in our lives, even after those we love no longer walk this earth. Fear not, Christians, for God's love is in each of us, powerful just like that tiny mustard seed. With that superpower, all shall be well. Just like St. Paul, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.